Hi, this is Dr. Tony Salome, and I'm going to talk to you about the five main causes of fibromyalgia and what you can do today to start addressing it. One thing with fibromyalgia is that it's not just a muscular disorder, it's an actual neurological disorder. And it's, what it does is it affects the muscles, but primarily it's going to affect, number one, the brain, and it's going to affect that down the spinal cord and affect the rest of the body. So what fibromyalgia, the way fibromyalgia works is that typically it, where it starts is in the brainstem. So in the brainstem, we have three parts. We have the medulla, we have the pons, and we have the midbrain. So what happens typically with fibromyalgia is that the lower part, the medulla, uh, does not control effectively or inhibit the upper part of the midbrain, which is controls our postural muscles. And also, the upper part of that brainstem affects and controls the spinal tracts that affect our adrenals, which produce the adrenaline, such as norepinephrine and epinephrine. And these are stress hormones or adrenal hormones that really sensitize all our nerve fibers. So what happens is, the basically what happens is the brainstem goes kind of in a sense out of control. It sends signals down the spinal cord, and then it goes into where the adrenal glands are, and then it starts to spill over hormones such as you know epinephrine, norepinephrine, cortisol. And what happens initially, it's okay. So in the beginning, time and time, nervous systems adapting to stress, but when this happens and this cycle becomes rampant, what happens is it starts to take a toll on those glands. So once it starts to take a toll on those glands, it starts to sensitize the nerve fibers. So now there are a little bit more complex things that happen with fibromyalgia in terms of the brain. It's, uh, there, there are issues with the temporal lobes or issues with the parietal lobes and perception of pain and so on and so forth, which gets much more complex. But I wanted you guys to know at least what the main pathophysiology of fibromyalgia is. So once we understand that, once we understand that the brain is act actually affecting the body in an adverse way where it's increasing those stress hormones, increasing that sympathetic part of the nervous system. That's that fight or flight part of the nervous system. So what happens is what we want to do is we want to do, we want to figure out things that we can do to support, number one, support the brain and then support the nervous system. What we can do, first of all, the brain needs activation and it needs fuel. So one of the things that we can do is exercise, light exercise, such as yoga or Tai Chi, or anything that is not too strenuous so that you're not, we're not putting too much stress on the adrenal glands. Another thing is that there are specific type of neurological treatments such as color therapy. There are different types of brain-based therapies that we do. There are things that you can do as far as chiropractic neurological adjustments that can stimulate the brain and get the brain firing and get things working in the system. So one of the things is, yes, supporting the nervous system by creating good neurological pathways, good plasticity, what we call it. Uh, so once we train it and we wire it properly through proper neurological activation, then what we wanna do is we want to support it through nutrition. And what we can do to things that we can support the brain with is there are various different things that are helpful. One of the things is that we wanna be consuming coconut oil because coconut oil is very good for the brain. Um, it contains medium chain triglycerides, which are uh, really act like almost like car carbohydrates in terms of very, they're much more easy, easily digestible and they serve with good fuel to the brain. Another thing is you can use uh, serine, which is an amino acid uh, that is very, very good. And there's, there's different supplements like phosphatidylcholine and phosphatidylserine. So these things that, these are supplements that you can take that are very helpful and that support memory and support just overall brain function. And you can eat foods that are rich in choline, such as eggs, egg yolks are very rich in choline that are very supportive of the brain. So these type of things are very important and they're also very helpful. Also, uh, let's not forget the fish oils, the DHA in fish oils is very, very powerful. And actually that fatty acid is very important for brain function because it relies on that type of um, that type of fatty acid. So it's part of the omega-3. So in that, in that fish oil, the DHA, there are some 
uh, supplements that actually make higher amounts of DHA, some of them like 20, 25 to one ratio, which higher, higher amounts of DHA, which is more, uh, which is better for, um, brain function. The EPA is more going to be more for inflammation. So both of them are very important. Both of them are very essential. Now, number two, then the, the second cause, which we kind of, almost went over it, is the adrenal glands. So what we wanna do is we wanna support the adrenal glands. These are glands that sit right above the kidney and these adrenal glands control everything. They're our first responses in our body. They're, they're right, right above the kidney. And what they do is they are your sound system. They are your alarm system. They go off when any type of stressor. So in order to be able to effectively treat the adrenal glands, what we want to do is we want to first, number one, minimize the amount of stresses that are in our body, on our body. Now, there's only so much, so much stress that we can handle. And what we want to do is we want to avoid as much of stressors as possible. So when wherever we're exposed to certain uh, environmental toxins, uh, food sensitivities, one of them, microbes, uh, physical trauma, physical trauma can be a, a big part of a stressor on the system. It can cause a lot of inflammation and of course, emotional and mental uh, issues as far as so a lot of the emotional trauma mental psychological these things can whether they're you know financial whether they're um whether they're uh relationship based whatever they are they uh these the psychological aspect can also play a role but when people think of stress they only think of the psychological part but there's also the biochemical part the physical part that are you know just as important so all of these factors are very important when they come into play when we're addressing something such as the adrenal glands and usually with people with fibromyalgia, their adrenal glands are taxed. I mean, they're constantly producing either in the beginning, they're constantly producing lots of cortisol, lots of adrenaline. It's hard to sleep. Maybe blood sugars are elevated because of all of this process. But then what happens is it leads to exhaustion. And that's where we find a lot of people with fibromyalgia start developing fatigue. So what we want to do is we really, really want to support and support the adrenal glands through minimizing those stressors and, and triggers. And another thing is also is we can support them nutritionally. Fortunately, we have some really good things that can really help with the adrenal glands. Vitamin C is one of them. Vitamin C is very, very important when it comes to adrenal function. Uh, another thing is vitamin B, vitamin B5 in particular, pent pentothenic acid. And then we have B complex, all the, all, basically all the other B vitamins, very, very important for the adrenal glands. And then there are also other, uh, some important things that you can also do for your adrenal glands. We have herbs like adaptogenic herbs. These are your ginsengs, uh, particular Siberian ginseng. We have ashwagandha as an excellent herb for uh, cortisol and for just supporting the adrenal gland. So if the adrenal gland is stressed too much or it's overproducing or underproducing, it's going to balance that out for you. So, and then we have holy basil, which is very good. It's anti-inflammatory and it also helps you go to sleep. So a lot of people when fibromyalgia, they have problems with insomnia. It's hard for them to, to find themselves either going to sleep or even staying asleep. Holy basil can be great for that. Holy basil can, can help get you to sleep and it can even help prolong sleep as well as inhibit inflammation. So these type of things can really be helpful when it comes to uh, treating or supporting the adrenal gland. Another thing is that uh, another very important cause of fibromyalgia is the gut. So I don't know if you've heard of the brain gut access or that relationship, but those two components are extremely essential. The brain and gut uh, control so many different things as part of aspects of our immune system, but gut issues and inflammation in the gut can be a big, big problem. What we find often is people with gut issues, they'll have inflammation uh, in their gut and that'll be associated with um, a dysbiosis, which is basically an imbalance in the uh, normal flora and their, in their gut in their microbiome. That's the new word that they, uh, that's been basically being used. But probiotic can help tremendously when it comes to uh, restoring proper normal flora in our, in our gut. So uh, we can get probiotics through um, acidophilus, through yogurt. We can, uh, kefir cheese is an excellent source of probiotics. Sauerkraut is an, uh, is an excellent source of probiotics. Anything that's pretty much fermented can really help and support gut function. Also, there are supplements that, that you can take also that are, you know, high in, in probiotics. Uh, I would go for opt for something that's at least like 30 billion. You don't really need a, a whole lot of strains of probiotics. I know a lot of them market that there's a hundred billion in that. It, it's not that essential. What's more important is that the probiotics are from coming from a good quality source. That, so if you're taking anything that's in a supplement form for probiotics, that you're getting good quality. So, Probiotics are very, very good 
for, for gut issues. Uh, L-glutamine. L-glutamine can help repair intestinal lining and it also can help with leaky gut. So whenever, whenever uh, somebody has a chronic inflammation and they have damage to their intestinal tissue or lining, they can be more prone to getting more types of other inf inflammatory disorders because they're basically, the, the intestines are permeable and they're getting in more and more different types of bugs and things that normally that healthy people would really block we would be getting more of that because of the impermeability. So what, what we can do for that is L-glutamine can really help support the lining, so it creates a barrier, so you're cons constantly not getting all of these different toxins that are constantly that the liver and the colon really have to deal with and kidneys have to deal with on a day-to-day on a -day basis. So by supporting the intestinal tract and supporting the lining of the intestines through L-glutamine, marshmallow root is another one, and then slippery elm, these all support lining of the intestines. So supporting the intestines is very important and there's a communication between that brain and gut. So whatever happens at the, at the central level, at the brain level, and whatever happens at the gut is really they're, they're, they're going to affect each other. So they, they both basically work together. So we want to make sure that we, uh, we take care of those components. Now fourth is the liver. So the liver is very important of course. Uh, liver has over 500 different functions that we know about. It's actually the largest internal organ in our body. So I know people say the skin is the largest organ, it's true, but the liver is actually the largest internal organ. And the liver is, uh, liver problems and toxicity and the inability to remove toxins uh, is a big part in people that suffer with fibromyalgia, fatigue, chemical sensitivity, and so on. So what we wanna do is we wanna support liver function. How do we support liver function? Number one, minimize the, the toxins, minimize the heavy metals, minimize the things that can affect not just the liver, but just as we mentioned earlier, with the adrenal glands and with the brain and so on. But what we wanna do is we can also support the liver by uh, doing things like rosemary. Rosemary is a great herb for the liver. Milk thistle is a, is a phenomenal herb to help even repair liver uh, tissue. We can take supplements such as N-acetylcysteine, which is a precursor to glutathione, which is a very important uh, integral part in the detoxification process. Actually, glutathione is the most abundant amino acid in the body. It's a combination of amino acids, but it is the most uh, important antioxidant and to clear your body of toxins and just to detoxify different poisons. So the liver plays a big role. Uh, and other things that you can do for the liver is vitamin A. Vitamin A is excellent for the liver. So you don't wanna take too much of the vitamin A, but vitamin A is also uh, very helpful when it comes to, to liver issues. So between these things that can help support the liver tremendously. The liver is what creates the oh achy, achy feeling. So it's part of that process is the liver really, whenever you get sick or you're battling something like the flu or a fever, uh, that achy feeling is usually associated with that liver syndrome where you just feel like, I just feel like everything aches, everything hurts. You wanna look at liver. So liver detoxification of the liver, supporting the liver tissue, and regeneration is gonna be very, very important in order to get the liver to work better. Now, lastly, is what we wanna talk about is the thyroid. And the thyroid, what we find, and I find this very, very more, more common than not, is I find a lot of people that have fibromyalgia have a thyroid condition. And usually it's, it's a type of hypothyroidism that's very becoming more and more common. It's called Hashimoto's disease. And what happens with Hashimoto's is that the immune system is actually attacking the thyroid gland. So it's very important to help control the immune system. Now, seldomly that when people take hormones for Hashimoto's, that's usually what they give them, either Synthroid or some type of Natrothroid or uh, Armor or just T3, those hormones may help a little bit, but they don't control this inflammatory process that's, that's occurring and it's affecting the actual thyroid. So these hormones don't really, really control the inflammatory process that's occurring in the thyroid gland. So what we want to do is we want to support thyroid function. And the way we want to support thyroid function is by, we can do things such as selenium, we can do things such as glutathione that I mentioned earlier, that glutathione can be very, very powerful. We actually uh, use a glutathione uh, cream and you can put right into your throat and that helps detoxify uh, toxins and helps remove heavy metals and things that can trigger 
the Hashimoto's condition. So these things that you can do, vitamin D, people who have low vitamin D or may have normal vitamin D, but they have problems with re the receptor with vitamin D, and this is common, need extra amount of vitamin D. Now you want extra amounts of vitamin D for to help control this the thyroid condition. So if you haven't been tested for Hashimoto's, I highly suggest that you get tested. If you have uh, thyroid type of symptoms such as hair falling out, depression, uh, constipation, and that may go along with your fibromyalgia. It doesn't mean you have fibro, but there's a chance that you could have those two together. And I do find that in about 30% of my fibromyalgia patients, I do find that they have some type of hypothyroidism type of issue. So I hope this helps put everything in perspective. We talked about the brain, we talked about the adrenal glands, we talked about the liver, we talked about the thyroid, and we talked about the gut. And these five things are very, very important when it comes to fibromyalgia. I hope this you got a lot of good information out of this. Please feel free to like and subscribe and, and hit that bell notification for more updates. I, I really enjoy providing more of these videos and I want to continue to do so. I appreciate your support and um, I just want to wish you guys uh, a great day and I want to thank you for watching this video. I'm Dr. Salome and have a great day.